So we've learned how to graph the sine and cosine functions, but we haven't talked about tan. Right? We haven't talked about f of x equals tan of x, what this looks like. And there's a reason for that. It's because it looks completely different from sine and cos. Right? Sine and cos look pretty similar to one another, but the tan function looks completely different. And part of the reason for that is, if you think about what tan represents, if I draw my plane here, um, if you have a line that's straight like this, just horizontal, tan of that is, you know, your opposite over adjacent, your y divided by your x. Well, that's just going to be zero, right? And another way to think about that is a line with a slope of zero, right? Um, if you have a line like this at, you know, 45 degrees, the slope of that line is one because the distance, you know, here and the distance here are the same. Opposite over adjacent, one to one, so your slope is one. But as your line becomes vertical like this, your x direction is 0 and your y direction is 1, you see that your slope is 1 over 0, which is undefined. You can't divide by 0, right? And of course, a vertical line doesn't have a quantifiable slope. It's undefined, right? And so for tan, we run into this issue where there are undefined points, right? And if you try to make a table of values, you'll see this. Let's plug in some values for x, like 0 degrees, 45 degrees. Um, we could do really, really close to 90 degrees, not quite. I'll say something like uh, uh, 89.9 degrees, right? And then you can do 90 degrees, and then you can do 90.1 degrees. I just want to show that just to make a point. Um, and then you'll do 135, 180, you know, 270 degrees, and you just continue on like that, right? Well, at zero, we know the slope is zero. We talked about that. At 45, we know the slope is 1. And I say the slope, I mean tan of 45 degrees is 1, right? Because after all, tan is just another way of showing what your slope is. Now, 89.9 degrees. If you go on your calculator and you type in tan of 89.9, you get 570 something, right? It's a big number. If you did tan of 89 point, you know, you start adding more nines, like 9999, you get a number in the millions, right? The slope becomes very, very, very big. So, at 89.9, I would just say the slope is very big. If you do just slightly bigger than 90, like 90.1, you get the exact opposite. It's a big number, but in the negative direction, right? So it's like negative a million. So you'd say it's very small. And if you try to do 90, of course, you're going to get undefined, right? And it makes sense on this graph because if you're just shy of 90 like this, that's very steep in the positive direction. But if you're going like this, it's very steep in the negative direction because you're going down as you go to the right, right? So that's why you get this very big and very small slope. Now, 135 degrees, you're going to get negative 1. Uh, 180, you get 0. 270, you get undefined again, right? Because that's down here. So when you're at the top or bottom, when you get close to those, when you get to those vertical positions, it's going to be undefined. So we can actually sketch this. Not too much of a problem. Um, what you end up doing is saying at all these points where it's undefined, like 90 degrees, for example. So I'll say, okay, this is 90 degrees. It's also undefined at 270 degrees, right? And halfway between those, you'll have 180 degrees, right? That's zero. Um, you can go to negative 90 degrees, negative 180, negative 270. At all the spots, it's undefined, right? 90, 270, negative 90, negative 270. Because the graph is undefined there, what you have is a vertical asymptote. So one there, one there, one here, one here. And this should be symmetrical. Mine's a little bit sloppy, but you get the idea, right? Um, and we figured out that at 45 degrees, you're at a height of one, right? So right here's 45 degrees. You're going to be at a height of one right? You also are at negative 1 when you're at 135. Well, 135 is right here. So you're going to be down here. Now that point and that point, those are going to guide us, right? And there's more points that you can find. Uh, but essentially what your shape looks like is something like this, where this is going to come down like that. And this comes down like that. And this is the same thing. It's going down like that. It's going up through the 180 like that. Same thing over here. This is going up like that, and it's going down like this. This is the general shape. You have these funny-looking curves, and they just repeat forever, right? There's one over here, you know, there's one over here, 
So this goes on forever and ever and ever. This is the relationship between your slope and your angle, essentially, right? Your x direction, right? And then over here you have tan of x, or the slope of the line that the angle x makes. Let's look at a cotangent. That should be fun. f of x equals cotangent of x. Now, you can do a table of values again, right? Say x, you can say cotangent x, just like this. And what x's should we plug in? Let's just use the same ones. So 0 degrees, 45, 90, 135, 180, uh, 225, 270, 315, 360. So you can see that I'm stopping every 45 instead of every 90, right? Because I want to show those points where it's actually equal to 1. Um, so if it's 0 degrees, well, tan of 0 is 0, so cotangent is just the opposite of that, 1 over that, so it's going to be undefined, right? At 45 degrees, for tan we got 1, so for cotangent it's 1 over 1, which is also 1. For 90, it was undefined because it was 1 over 0, but for cotangent it's the opposite, so it's 0 over 1, so at 90 degrees it's actually 0, right? At 135, you get negative 1. At 180, it's undefined. You keep following this pattern, right? 1, 0, negative 1, undefined, right? Every answer you get is the inverse of the answer you got for tan, or the opposite, right? You just flip it. And so if you're trying to graph this, it would look something like this. You draw your plane at all those points where it's undefined. We're drawing a vertical asymptote again. So at zero, it's undefined. So you have a vertical asymptote. I'm going to draw it just to the right of zero, but it's really right on that y-axis. I just want you to be able to see it. Um, we also have one at 180 degrees, just like this. We also have one at 360 degrees over here. And if you go to the left, the same thing is true, right? You can go to negative 180 degrees, and you'll have one there. You can go to negative 360, and you'll have one there. Because again, this pattern continues forever, right? You can go another 180 to the left or another 180 to the right. Exact same thing. Now, at 90, you're at 0. Um, at 270, you're also at 0, right? So you have those two points. Same with negative 90 and negative 270. Right, just like that. Uh, at 45 degrees, so right here, you're at a height of 1. At 135, right here, you're at negative 1. That's important because it shows us the direction of the curve we're going to have. Right, and it's the same thing everywhere. Connect these together. Get a line like that. A line something like that. It's kind of tricky to draw, right? But you get the idea. That's a nice one. Something like that. So again, they never touch the vertical asymptotes. They just get very, very close. In fact, they get infinitely close the further up and down they go, right? So this is the cotangent x function. Now you can see why we don't learn these when we learn sine and cos, because they look so much different, right? They don't have the same applications either. Um, if you notice the relationship between the cotangent one and the tangent one, they're both very, very similar, right? Um, it looks like the cotangent one has just been shifted to the right. So for the tan x, you have your vertical asymptotes at 90, 270s, right? So all the odd numbers times 90, so like 90 times 1, 90 times 3, right? 270. You'll have another one at 90 times 5. But down here, you have the asymptotes at all of the degrees, which are 90 times even numbers. So 90 times 2, you're at 180. 90 times 4, you're at 360. It's just a pattern to notice. There's other patterns here as well that you can see, but the relationship is clear, right? They look very similar to each other. Now that's cotangent of x. What about cosecant and secant, right? And to talk about those, we might want to start by revisiting sine and cos. So if you recall, f of x equals sine of x. Uh, we have a table of values, right? You could say x and f of x, just like that. And we can plug in some angles, right? 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. That should be enough for what we need. And we know that you know sine of 0 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 180 is 0, 
sine 270 is negative 1, sine 360 is 0. And we can go ahead and we can graph this, right? And I'm actually going to graph to the left and to the right on the x-axis. Okay, so we have a maximum height of 1, minimum height of negative 1. Goes something like this, goes up, comes down, goes back up, goes down, comes back up, goes back down. Something like that, right? Where this is, this here is 360, right? This over here is negative 360. This is negative 180. This here is 180, right? You have 90, 270, negative 90, negative 270, just like that, right? It's good enough. Now, what if we have another function, right? What if we have g of x, and we say that's cosecant of x, right? What do we do? Well, let's add it to our table of values, just like that. So because cosecant is just 1 over sine, the answers are going to be the inverse of all of these. So instead of 0, you'll have 1 over 0, which is undefined. You'll have 1 over 1, which is 1. 1 over 0, which is undefined. 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. 1 over 0, which is undefined. So we can start drawing some things on here, right? At 0, you're undefined. That means there's a vertical asymptote. Same with 180, right? You'll have another vertical asymptote. And 360 as well. Same on the negative side. Right? One there, one there, like that. Now, at 90 degrees, you still are at a height of 1. You're here. At 270, you're still at a height of negative 1. Right? Same is true over here. So how is that possible? Well, it's because the shapes you have are as follows. They're kind of like horseshoes, but they just start shooting down and shooting up like that. They never stop. So sometimes when you graph these cosecant functions, it's helpful to draw the original first because you can really see how they fit together, right? So that's cosecant. Let's look at secant. And to look at secant, we want to start with cos, right? So f of x equals cos x. We'll do our table of values again. So x, f of x, same angles, right? 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. That's pretty good f of x, right? Cos of 0 is 1. Cos of 90 is 0. Cos of 180 is negative 1. Cos of 270 is 0. Cos of 360 is 1. So we go ahead and we graph this, right? So we can do it just like this. Um, 180, you're down here, up here, up here. And you make this shape. And the same goes for the right hand side. Okay, now again, same idea. What if I introduce g of x? I say that's equal to secant of x. Add that to your table. Okay, inverse of 1, right? 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 0, undefined. 1 over negative 1, negative 1. 1 over 0, undefined. 1 over 1 is 1. So at 90 degrees and at 270, right, you're going to have vertical asymptotes. So one like that, one over here, and on the negative side too, right? One here, one here. Basically, where your roots used to be, right, where your x-intercepts used to be, you now have these vertical asymptotes, right? Because instead of the value being 0, it's 1 over 0, which is undefined. Okay? At 0, you're still at a height of 1. You know, you're still at a height of negative 1 over here and, and over here. And you can fill in the gaps, right? You can say, okay, you got a curve up here. You got your curve down here. Curve down here. And actually, you know, you'll have a curve here, a curve here, right? And that goes like that and like that, right? Because there's another asymptote there and there's another, you know, asymptote there. And this curve is going to come down and it's going to touch that right there. And this curve is going to come down like that and touch that right there. And those are going to continue forever as well, right? Like this graph never ends. It goes forever to the left and to the right. So that is how you graph a cosecant or secant function.